history, earthquakes in diverse places, and famines, and pestilences like the Black Plague of the Middle Ages, and all kind of potato famines, and all things throughout history. But what earmarks this time in the centuries is that back over in 1948, Israel became a nation once again. And uh, that hadn't happened for two, over 2,000 years. And it's a prophetic return of God's people to the land, which he promised would happen. And he started to bring them out. Even now, there's people coming out from all the nations of the world and making aliyah to the Israel, you know, and they're coming to the homeland. That's what makes this season and this time so different. And why we know it's the beginning of sorrows. As nation has risen against nation, even now we hear of these wars and rumors of wars. We hear little things about things happening in Syria and you know demonstrations and repression and killings. And we hear we see the the recent uh, little wars that a uh, little, but you know, big over there. But small wars in the in the Middle Eastern countries over in North Africa with Gaddafi and uh, all of those regions over there in, in Egypt. And uh, we see these wars, we hear of rumors of war. This is the time that we're living in. And it's heading to a time of Jacob's trouble or the tribulation period. We're heading towards, we're heading towards the return of the Lord. We're heading and looking forward also to the greatest harvest of souls the world has ever seen. And so we're shortly before that time of the, all that coming. And it's called the beginning of sorrows because there will see things that can, can evoke sorrow out of us, such as we saw last year with the, with the uh, tsunami and earthquake in Japan. You know, 14,000 people killed in, in a matter of just a small amount of time as the earthquake happens and all that water flooded in. Things like that, or the earthquake in Haiti a few years ago. So we see these beginnings of sorrows happening around us. And you know, the Bible declares these things. Jesus said they must come to pass, but the end is not yet. So we'll be seeing some of these things. But remember, we're in the beginning of sorrows, but we're looking. And all these are pointing to the fact Jesus is coming back. Amen. Hallelujah. And what a blessed hope that is. And we're looking forward to it. Hallelujah. Now Pat's going to begin to share as we've introduced the time that we're in, what God has given us for 2000, well, 2012, say 2016, whatever you like. Yes. Amen. Where we're at right now. Amen. <laughs> yes, as we sought the Lord, it was, these are some of the things the Lord began to speak to us. For God's people in 2012, who are poised and ready to move out when he begins to stir and move through you. In other words, who are poised and ready to move, those that have been spending time with him, who are listening and very familiar with hearing his voice, then you are poised and ready to move. The Lord said, for those that are, many of the prophecies that you have received will be fulfilled many parts of them this year because there's going to be an acceleration of so many things. It's going to be happening you know, at a much quicker pace. Um, in 2012, things are going to move so much more quickly. This kingdom work, work that God wants done, the work that he uses us to do, he work through, will be accelerated for those who have said yes Lord and will move out as he directs we will see so many more things being done even if, as we look at other ministries and situations that for those that are poised and ready to move we will see them moving out and and doing so many so much more than they have done and I'm believing that for us too, mm -hmm. greater outreach, mm -hmm. reaching more people in this area, you know, that's so strong, you know, within me that we will move out into that in a greater way in 212, personally. So, another part that the Lord shared with me very, very distinctly 
was that as issues come up in the body of Christ, you know, with your sister and brother, um, bury them, crucify your flesh. He's working deeply in people right now to do that. He's pulling things up and out if we're willing to spend the time with him. He needs us to crucify our flesh for the greater works that he wants to do through us. Um, let's turn to Galatians 5, 14 through 16. And it's very